Today is the day we have finally seen some cars on track in 2020. Welcome back everyone. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. Welcome to your F1 2020 Austrian Grand Prix practice report. There's a mouthful for you. But if you are new around here and you've joined over the winter, on a Friday, we do a little bit of a discussion, a bit of an analysis of the two testing sessions we have in the morning and the one that is just finished this afternoon. We missed practice three because that's on Saturday morning before qualifying, but certainly, Day number one gives us a rough idea of how the pecking order is going to shape out over the weekend. And of course today, come on guys, I'm sure we're all just buzzing that there's cars on the track to be honest with you. Formula 2 is also taking place at the moment and we'll have a little view of the grid for tomorrow's feature race at the end of today's video. But I will say this now and I will say this all season long, just remember it's only practice just because a certain driver is at the front and at the back does not mean that's where they're going to be come qualifying, certainly come race day. Right then, shall we have a look at some times and then we'll have a bit of a discussion about race pace, quali pace and a few incidents throughout the day. And my goodness, that second practice session was very spicy indeed. But this morning, it was all about jumping into that car, getting you to the sensations and just trying to put in some solid laps. And that's exactly what both of the Black Arrow Mercedes cars did. Lewis Hamilton, a 104.816 on the soft tyre compound, followed by his teammate three tenths behind was Valtteri Bottas. It was Max Verstappen behind the two Mercedes and spoiler alert, I think it may remain those three as the top three for the entire weekend. Carlos Sainz though, not far behind the Red Bull, only 13 thousandths behind his former teammate. Sergio Perez split the two McLarens, but Lando Norris performed well in the opening session of the season. Alexander Albon was seventh for Red Bull and has had a tricky start to proceeding so far over the course of today. Daniel Ricciardo, an impressive eighth place for Renault, also doing his quickest time on the medium compound tyres, only one second away from Lewis Hamilton's best. That Renault could be a bit of a dark horse this weekend. Kevin Magneton scraped into the top ten, another car that I think a lot of people expected to struggle, but in testing so far, looking all right. And it was Charles Leclerc, the lead Ferrari, down in tenth position. His fastest was on the medium compound, but still losing out to drivers like Ricardo, like Magnussen, both Red Bull cars, both McLarens, and even a racing point. Lance Stroll was 11th, bottom half best of the rest on the soft tyre compound. Everyone else in the bottom half posted their best time on the medium tyres. Stroll looks like he's got a good car this weekend. Can he convert that to a great performance tomorrow? Sebastian Vettel, P12 for Ferrari on those medium compound tyres. Esteban Ocon, finally. I bet he is the most relieved man of anybody today. Finally is returning to racing. Over two years of waiting, bless him. And though he wasn't quite on the pace of Ricardo, still looks strong out there today. Giovinazzi, the lead Alfa Romeo in P14, followed by teammate Kimi Raikkonen. Pierre Gasly, beating out the two Williams of Russell and Latifi. Danny Kvyat, our final classified runner in P19. And in the first session of the season, excluding winter testing of course, Romain Grosjean did not set a single lap time. Now. We might as well talk about a few of the incidents from that first session. Grosjean obviously is a huge outlier here. Only three laps completed and all of those were installation laps. Brakes failed super early on in the session and was so, so lucky to get out at the end. With a minute to go, they managed to fix it. I believe it was the oil within the brakes was leaking. An absolute catastrophe for Grosjean and someone who had ridiculously bad reliability issues last year. It appears that that luck is continuing through to 2020. And in a season where he needs to absolutely smash it to retain his seat, not the best start to the season for Paul Roman. But thankfully, it wasn't to do with him crashing the car. So for Haas, I'm sure they were glad that it was themselves and the reliability issue rather than a driver issue. It's still certainly not ideal, but thank goodness they got out at the end of the session and did plenty of running in the afternoon. 
We also saw both Williams' cars looking much, much better from last season. George Russell was on a great flying lap, but was blocked by Pierre Gasly on the final corner. Gasly going for a bit of a spin. Bless him. Struggling a little bit in the opening session. Had two spins in the morning. Quite a few cars taking to the gravel and having a couple of spins here and there. But it was the afternoon where pretty much every single car was doing pirouettes. The wind picked up. The two Red Bull cars seemed to really struggle to keep it on track, especially Max Verstappen. But in that afternoon session, once again, Lewis Hamilton on top, slightly quicker this time, about five tenths quicker than his morning time, a 104.304 in the afternoon. Once again, followed by Valtteri Bottas. This time though, a little bit closer, two tenths away from his teammate. Sergio Perez was third overall. Racing point really do seem to have the pace here this weekend. Sebastian Vettel, also, looking quite strong in that Ferrari in the afternoon session. Still, though, six tenths off Mercedes. A little bit alarming considering all of the top ten on these soft compound tyres. Daniel Ricciardo. Really impressed with him today. I think my two drivers of the day, probably, I mean, excluding Hamilton and Bottas, that were pretty much in a class of their own. Ricciardo and Perez pretty much didn't put a foot wrong. And both of them looking really pacey. And if there's any contact up ahead... Keep an eye out for those two to potentially be on the podium. Lando Norris also performing really well and consistently for McLaren. He was behind Ricardo in P6. Lance Stroll a couple of tenths off his teammate in P7. Looking forward to seeing what he can do tomorrow. Max Verstappen, as I just mentioned, plenty of issues in the afternoon session. Spinning at Turn 1 early on in the session. And then on the exit of Turn 5, going into the gravel after a kick of understeer. Really, not the start of the season that Red Bull were looking for and hoping for, but I still think they'll have a good weekend ahead of them. Their race pace particularly looking strong. Charles Leclerc down in P9 and Carlos Sainz for McLaren rounded out the top 10. Your bottom half in the afternoon, Esteban Ocon was your best of the rest. Danny Kvyat performing better in the afternoon, but still a couple of mistakes from him this afternoon. Spins in turn one, another driver that was getting caught out quite a bit was old Danny Kvyat. Alexander Alban, 13th, also another driver, getting caught out at turn one more than once as well, bless him. Struggled again this afternoon. A lot of eyes are going to be on him in these opening eight rounds of the season. Needs to impress if he wants to keep that seat for future seasons. Not the best start so far, but I think he'll be okay over the course of the weekend. Once again, Antonio Giovinazzi, the lead Alfa Romeo, proving that the progress he made last season is looking to come good once again this season, comfortably ahead of Kimi Raikkonen in the afternoon. Then came the two Haas cars, Magnussen in front of Grosjean. Magnussen a little bit slower in the afternoon. Grosjean, three tenths behind his teammate, but his first laps of the weekend, I bet he's just grateful that the car actually got through the afternoon session. Gasly, more spins for him in the afternoon. He seems to have really taken a bit of a struggle in to the start of proceedings at the moment. George Russell, P18, another one struggling in the Williams car, but did beat Kimi Raikkonen. Nicholas Latifi also spinning throughout the session at 2.8 seconds off Lewis Hamilton's time. One second off his teammate, did struggle in the afternoon, but he is the only rookie in the field. And that Williams appears to me to still be at the back of the pack. And Latifi a little bit off Russell, but I think Russell could push forward in qualifying tomorrow. So far, I'm thinking the running order is something like this. Mercedes seem to have a bit of a gap over the rest of the field, and certainly in qualifying pace. But I think Red Bull are there or thereabouts, and a stunning lap from either driver could put them in the mix on the front row. Race pace, I think Mercedes and Red Bull are pretty much nailed on. Behind them... I think it's a real scrap for third place. I think Ferrari are going to be favourites for that third place. I think Sebastian Vettel in particular looked quite strong this afternoon. So I think he'll be OK. Leclerc struggling a little bit. But again, I'm not too sure if we've seen their real pace just yet. But I think just behind Ferrari are your racing points, your McLarens and your Renaults. I think all those four teams are looking very, very good to be sitting comfortably for a podium if there's any kind of contact between Mercedes or Red Bull. Behind that group, I think you've got your backpack then, really. I think at the front of that backpack, potentially 
Could be, oh, it's so, so difficult to tell. Alpha Tauri, but then they struggled in the in the morning session. But I really do believe it's, it's a flip of the coin. Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo, Haas, and Williams at the back. It's just going to be, when it comes to qualifying day, who can nail the lap? The Alpha Tauri, though, has pace over one lap. Seems to be a little bit twitchy, a little bit nervous. And I just wonder if that will catch out a couple of the drivers. The Haas car... Magnussen did a cracking job in the morning session, but in the afternoon looked a little bit further off. And George Russell maybe could squidge through into Q2 tomorrow. So really looking forward to seeing what he can do in race pace. Track limits seem to be an issue this weekend. Plenty of bits and bobs falling off those Formula 1 cars today. Aston Ocon losing a bit of the floor in the morning session. Carlos Sainz losing a bit of front wing in the afternoon session but I think we're being teed up for a very nice weekend. And drivers that are a little bit rusty wouldn't surprise me to see a couple of spins, certainly in qualifying, but maybe in the race. As always, in these previews, and just before we get onto the Formula 2 grid, I want to take a look at your predictions for the weekend. Yesterday, I set up this grid, and I do this every year. And I want to know your pole position predictions, front row and biggest shock for qualifying and in the race, who is the winner? Who's going to share the podium, the first retirement, driver of the day and best of the rest? And I'll pick two of my favourites, but also the two most liked. So there's a bit of a cop out for you. So these were the top comments on yesterday's preview. And just a side note, thank you for all your support on the preview. I tried to make it much better this year and you guys seem to have noticed, which is lovely. But here you go. The most liked comment from Lucas Hamilton and Max Verstappen. On pole position with Valtteri Bottas sharing the front row. He's gone with a biggest shock of Lance Stroll making it through to Q3. Is that a bit of a big shock? Now we know what we know after practice. Maybe not so much, but certainly Stroll struggled immensely at getting that car through to Q3 last year. So I can see why people were liking this one. But he's gone with an Alex Albon victory. Podium shared by Bottas and Stroll because Lewis Hamilton, and he also said Max Verstappen, will be your first retirement. I'm assuming going for a, a first lap crash between the two of them. I couldn't quite fit in Hamilton and Verstappen, but he put Hamilton first, so that's why I've thrown it on there. Driver of the day, Alex Albon, and best of the rest, Sergio Perez. So I think he's going for a fourth place, Sergio Perez. I didn't quite make that clear with best of the rest if there was some kind of crash. But Albon for a victory would be a very, very popular choice. And the second most liked comment comes from Kingfisher Comparisons, Leclerc for pole position seems a little bit unlikely with how things have gone so far this morning. Verstappen to share the front row of the grid with Sergio Perez in fourth place, the racing point. A Verstappen victory, Hamilton and Bottas on the podium. First retirement, he just went with Haas. Blanket statement Haas. Whether that's a crash between the two of them or whether that's just one of them, I'm not too sure. Probably both of them equally as likely. And drive of the day and best of the rest, he's gone with Sergio Perez. And finally, before we go, let's take a look at today's top 10 and grid for tomorrow's Formula 2 feature race. And on pole position for the second time in his career. And can I just throw it out there, my pick for 2020 champion, Guan Yu Zhou, a stunning lap from the Chinese driver. Four tenths in front of second place, Felipe Drogovic. What a stunning lap that was from the Brazilian. Debut this weekend. Can he hold on in the race? Callum Eilat was third overall. It was another Renault driver in P4 for Christian Lungard. So first and fourth for Renault. They'll be very happy with that. Mick Schumacher was fifth with debutant Jehan de Ruvula in P6. Luca Giotto was seventh. Robert Schwartzman. P8, Dan Tixon P9, and rounding out the top 10, Louis Delatraz. But with red flags scattered throughout today's running, yellow flags late on with Mazepin going into the gravel, Sato causing a late red flag as well. I wouldn't say today's qualifying was necessarily representative of the actual running order, but Joe throughout the session smashed it, and I think it's got a good chance of a first feature race win tomorrow. And that's your lot for the first practice report of the 2020 season. Let me know your prediction for the weekend in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're not doing so already. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.